to walk in the word with us. We greet you on this wonderful Wednesday, this Fresh Start Wednesday, and we certainly give God praise for bringing us to another Wednesday, another day, because this certainly is the day that the Lord has made, and we want to rejoice and be glad in it. Not only has the Lord brought us to another day, another week, but the Lord has brought us into another month, this month of August, this month of new beginnings, the eighth number representing the month of new beginnings. But what I like to call it is the month of the fresh start. So we can't see what the, wait to see what the Lord is going to do in this brand new month. And we're so glad that you are here with us as we continue to talk about our miracle working God. We're so grateful that the Lord is still a miracle working God. As always, we give honor to our pastor, the Reverend Jerry D. Black, honor to our first lady, Sister Kate Black, and we are grateful to our pastor for giving us another opportunity to walk in the word with you. We are anxiously awaiting the return of our pastor, and we are thankful that he is doing so much better. So we continue to thank you for your prayers for both our pastor and our first lady. Joining me tonight is my friend, my brother, my mentee, my nephew, Brother Ahmad Hicks. So glad to have you with 
with us yes, on this evening, Brother Ahmad. Glad to be here once again. We give God glory that once again we are here discussing our miracle working God. And Brother Ahmad, I certainly feel like that between the last time we were here and this time that somebody has experienced a miracle. And we give God praise that every single day, I certainly believe that the Lord works a miracle. And so I'm excited tonight that we are going to dig a little deeper, scratch beneath the surface just a little harder, delve a little further into this study of our miracle working God. We're actually getting near the end of this study of our miracle working God, but we want to make sure that we cover the expanse of what our Lord can do in the area of miracles, because before we leave this study, we want to make sure that you know without a doubt, with an assurity and with certainty, that God can certainly work a miracle in your life. So we hope that you have your Bibles with you tonight as we trek through the Lord's Word. But before we go any further, of course, we want to greet the Lord in prayer. God, we are so grateful to you on tonight for another opportunity to study your word, to come before you just to say thank you. God, we give you praise for bringing us throughout this day, bringing us to this moment where we are able to gather, Lord God, in this sanctuary, in this holy place. But God, knowing that you are indeed an omnipresent God while you are here with us, you are certainly here with all of us, Lord God, whether you be with us in our homes, in our workplaces, in our schools, on our jobs, Lord God, wherever we are, Lord God, there you are too. And so God, we're so grateful, Lord Jesus, that whether we're on the mountaintop or on the valley low, Lord God, there you are. And so God, we thank you that you are still an omnipresent God. And not only that are you in an omnipresent God, Lord God, you are in an omniscient God and that you know all things. And God, not only do you know all things, Father God, you see all things, Lord God, and you're able to cover us from all things. And God, not only are you an omnipresent God, not only are you an omniscient God, you are an omnipotent God having power over all things. And so God, we thank you for the power that you've been exercising over our life power that has brought us even into this new month, Lord God, this new week, into this new day. And so, Lord God, we thank you, Father God, that you still continue to sit on the throne all by yourself. And God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are still God all by yourself. Even in the midst of all of this tragedy in our world, Lord God, in the midst of the pandemic of COVID-19, in the midst of the rising yes. monkeypox, Lord God, epidemic, Lord Jesus, in the midst of war, Lord God, in the midst of inflation, in the midst of everything that is around us, you are still God. And so God, we ask, Father God, that you would help us to trust in you. And God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, right now that for the next hour or so, Lord God, we can turn our attention to you, Lord Jesus, to the study of your word, Lord God, the word that never fails. So many other things have faded away, Lord God. So many other things have transpired, but your word stands forever. So God, help us to turn our attention to you. Allow your Holy Spirit to be with us. And God, we will always give you the praise, always give you the honor, and always give you the glory. It is in your name that we ask and that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Again, we are so glad to have you with us. So glad that you're checking in from points near and no matter whether you're checking in from these contiguous 49 states, the 48 states, some say that they're 49, but some say that they're only 48. Whether you're checking in from the 50 states of the United States or whether you're checking in from across the world, it really doesn't matter. Let us know where you're watching from tonight, where you're studying from. And then, of course, if you have comments or questions, make sure to post those because we'll be receiving those on this evening as we walk in the word on this evening. So we are here again in lesson eight of our miracle working God. And we've been talking about the Lord's ability to work miracles as he's shown us in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And then we began to dig a little deeper, even in the New Testament, even moving away from the gospels on last week as Reverend Seals discussed uh, the meaning of spiritual gifts and how even the Lord has empowered even his disciples and his apostles to be able to work miracles, signs, and wonders, and how in order to do that, you have to be able to be enabled and empowered with the spiritual gifts. And so tonight, we're going to give it, dig a little deeper and find out how we can close the gap 
between the supernatural and the natural. So we're going to ask ourselves, why, what is the point of us studying this miracle working God, right? Because God left so much of it in his word. But what do we need to know from those 2,000 years ago to bring it all the way to 2022? So a couple of weeks we talked about what miracles show us, right? When we talked about God's existence, his power, and his reign. But if God reigns, then that means that his kingdom still exists, right? And so Henry Blackaby told us in Experiencing God that God is always at work. He's always at work in his kingdom. So that means that you and I must be doing the work of his kingdom. We must join him in his work. So therefore, miracles are a function of God's kingdom work. So we want to begin to look at miracles, not just as the very nature of God, because we understand that God is a miracle working God, right? That is his nature. He, it is in his nature to bless us. It is in his nature to be gracious unto us, but also in juxtaposition again between the supernatural and the natural. So how can we bring these miracles out of the divine and a little bit closer to our understanding? Now, don't get me wrong. We are not going to be understanding how or why they happen, but we want to understand how they really function in the kingdom. So when we get ready and we get through tonight's lesson, they're going to help us to answer three fundamental questions. How does God use miracles? Why does God use miracles? And what should we do once a miracle has been performed in our life? Because we understand God doesn't need the miracles. Who needs them? We do, right? Which leads us to believe that they are for our primary purpose, not God's. We know that God could just sit on his throne and not have to do anything and still be God, right? But because God loves us so much, he performs these miracles, right, to prove his existence, his power, and his reign. So let's go back to the early church. Reverend Seals took us there last week when he started in the book of Acts. And so we're going to go back to Acts, and we're going to look at the early church, and we're going to look at evangelism and start looking at miracles and how they were performed and how they worked with evangelism and forming the early church. So in the early church, everyone was an evangelist because everyone bore witness to the miracles of Christ and they knew someone who bore witness. The Great Commission, of course, Pastor Black talks about the Great Commission all the time, commanded that we all become witnesses. You know that you are a witness. You are a witness, right? When you Certainly. get ready to go to Georgia Tech, you better be down there witnessing, Certainly. right? We are all witnesses because the Great Commission tells us to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, right? That is what the Lord says at the end of Matthew 28. So here we are in Acts, and you can go ahead and turn there. We're going to be going to Acts chapter 2 when we look at the early church, and we begin to see the formation of the church, right? Peter the disciple, we know what Peter looked like, right, when he was walking with Jesus, right? He had his issues. That's okay. The Lord worked with him. He changed him. And then Peter, he preaches this sermon, right? We know that the day of Pentecost happened. Then the early church began to start forming itself, right? And so then we begin to see evangelism taking place, but not just haphazardly on a daily basis. So it teaches us that we should be witnessing about the Lord's goodness when on a daily basis. So let's look at Acts chapter 2, verses 43 through 47. It says, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And the Lord added to the church daily 
those who were being saved. So what happens at the beginning of that passage that I read? Many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. So the Lord empowered them to perform these signs and wonders, right? Almost like these miracles, things that they had never seen before. Why? So that he could add to the church daily. So we look at these things that look like miracles, right? These signs and wonders, right? Being performed through human nature, but empowered by the Lord's Holy Spirit so that the church could be formed, right? So we look at ourselves. How can we be empowered by God to do things that are of God, right? So that the church can continue. So that the church, we know that the church is already formed now, but the church must still continue, right? So that it can do the work, the work of the kingdom, kingdom work. So if we look at miracles, signs, and wonders being performed throughout the book of Acts, right? Then we understand that these are tools for evangelism, but they still point back to the miracle worker. If we flip over to Acts chapter 14, verse 3, we're looking at Paul and Barnabas. And we know that Paul, after having been changed from Saul, right, his countenance changed, his nature changed, his name changes, right? Everything about him changes. So what he once does, he now no longer do, uh, does, right? Everything he does now is for the work of the Lord, for the work of the kingdom. So chapter 3, I mean, ver uh, chapter 14, verse 3 says, Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Here it is again, the Lord giving them power to perform signs and wonders. But what are they doing? Speaking boldly in the Lord, right? So the power coming from the miracle working God, right? And the Lord using them in order to be able to be witnesses for him so that there can be others who are saved. So it's the hands of Paul and Barnabas, right? But it was the power of the Lord who granted them the ability to perform the signs of the wonders, right? So we may think of evangelism as an organized ministry. We have the ministry of evangelism here, right? Even before the pandemic, even now through the pandemic, we would go knocking from door to door, right? Uh, evangelizing. But sometimes we may have gotten away, not just here at Beulah, but the church in general, from thinking that in evangelism is only an organized ministry, right? But evangelism is a personal call, yes, right? We have all been called to evangelism. So we, if we look at the book of Acts, we can understand that personal evangelism took place all throughout the book of Acts, right? Acts chapter 8, there's the witness of Philip to the eunuch. Peter, uh, Acts chapter 10, Peter to Cornelius, Acts chapter 13, Paul to the proconsul, and other personal uh, accounts of evangelism in the book of Acts. The entire book of Acts, 28 chapters, is a manual for evangelism. And if we look at miracles being performed in our lives and in the lives of others, we have enough to use in terms of witnessing on the power of God. So has the Lord opened any doors for you to be able to witness in your life? Absolutely, absolutely. Even now, going into this new chapter of my life and getting ready to go to Georgia Tech, he has definitely opened doors and I'm able to see you know, that power and witness those miracles that God works. Amen. So we are all called to be evangelists. And if we look at the miracles that have been performed, even if we don't feel like we are performing miracles, signs, and wonders, when we take witness of miracles, signs, and wonders, right? If we know somebody who has been healed, if we know somebody who has been delivered, somebody who has been set free, right? Then we can use that as a tool of evangelism. Yes. So God does not allow us to take privy to something, to witness something in order for us to just keep it to ourselves, right? We want to be able to share that. We want to be able to witness that. And so we thank God for these miracles, these signs and wonders that take place all around us. It is because God allows us to take part in that and to see that, to hear that, not to just say, oh, maybe that happened. I don't know. No, when somebody brings something to you, you can say, well, let me tell you what happened to my mother. Let me tell you what happened to my sister. But the biggest uh, testimony of all is let me tell you what happened to me. 
from me, yes. right? And so when that happens, then you are able to evangelize and help someone come further into the folds of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we also understand that just like in the Bible days, even now, we also understand that we have to deal with false prophets, yes. right? Uh, and liars. Mm -hmm. And those who may seemingly also be able to perform signs and wonders, but they're not doing it for the glory of the Lord. They're doing it for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. So even in the Bible days, the Lord speaks very clearly about this, right? There were false prophets. There were those who pretended to be the Messiah, right? So what about those who use signs and wonders that are not of God? It seems as if they are um, able to do the same things that those of us who have the power of God, right? So we have like uh, modern day televangelists, right? If you're up very late at night, you'll see them. I won't mention them by name, but you'll see them, right? Saying that if you send some money in, then you're going to be healed, right? All your debt is gonna be walked, uh, wiped away. Um, then we have other false prophets claiming to right, have the very power of God. Even enemies are capable of sometimes performing signs and wonders but they're not reflective of Christ's power. And so we have to be very careful that we don't get wrapped up in false prophets, right? Or false Christ, false messiahs, those who we think have the same power that Christ does because there is only one miracle working God, right? Mark chapter 13, verse 22 reads, and then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, Believe him not, for false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, and if it were possible, even the elect. So what is that saying to you? It says that false prophets can seduce even those who are close to God, even those who have been chosen. So we must be very careful that we are not fooled by false prophets. That's why this book is so important. That's why prayer is so important. That's why staying in the will of God is so important. And knowing it for self. Knowing it for yourself, not just believing it because somebody says it. We're so grateful to be under a leader who always says, don't just take my yes. word for it. Read it for yourself when you get home, so then you will know whether or not the Lord has really said it. Not only false prophets, but then there's the man of lawlessness. And I really believe that there is one among us who is a man of lawlessness. Again, not mentioning any names, but you'll know as soon as I read this, somebody will come to your mind. There will even be one who comes to do the work of Satan and will use signs and wonders to deceive those who follow Christ and will be successful because sometimes people will accept lies over the truth. Mm. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse nine through 11. And I'm gonna actually read this from the New Living Translation because I really think it pinpoints what the Lord wanted us to know. It says, this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. So God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. Mm. Let me tell you, the mind is a very powerful thing, but once it has been deceived, it is very difficult to undo deception. Mm -hmm. So that is why we must be very careful that we put no man over God, over God, right? No man over God's truth. The Bible is very clear. You need to know the truth mm -hmm. in order for the truth to be able to set you free, right? You have to know the Lord's word in order to be freed by God's yes. word. Don't get caught up in lies. Don't get caught up in signs and wonders that appear to be good if it's really not God, right? Sometimes we get caught up in things that are good, but they're not God. Uh, false prophets, men of lawlessness. And then there are some things that seem like they're gonna be confusing, right? The book of Revelations, mm -hmm. right? I mean, people avoid it because it's scary. People say that it's it scary, is. right? But it is what it is. The Lord would not have included it if he didn't want us to know about it. So the book of Revelations, we see signs and wonders being used as both heavenly visions 
and then instruments of Satan forces. So we got works of God, we got mm -hmm. works of evil, right? The beginning always reflects the end, right? The beginning of the earth, we have works of God, we have works of Satan. That's why he had to put them out, right? So the end. And then we have those who say, you know, everything that's happening now is the end times. But what does the Bible say? No man knows. No, no man knows the day, the hour, the time. Nobody knows. So things can look like they, they can appear that, but none of us really know when the Lord Jesus is coming. We just know we need to be ready when he comes, yes. right? So what is the difference then? between signs and wonders performed by others and signs and wonders performed by God. The signs and wonders performed by God always point to the miracle. And in the miracle is the message. And we want to always make sure that we understand what the message is. A lot of times we get caught up in the signs and the wonders. Jesus himself told the disciples, he told the people that were following him, you guys are stargazers, you're always looking for a sign. When here I am, I am the message, I am he that has come. So a lot of times we're always looking for a sign and we miss the message. Don't miss the message. What is the message the Lord told us in John 3, 16? Christ was born, he died, he rose, and he's going to live forever. Yes. The miracle always points back to the message, right? Every miracle points back to the fact that the Lord sent his son, right? Every miracle points back to that. And that is what we want to make sure that we understand. The Lord is always reminding us who he is, wanting to remind others who he is. And sometimes we get caught up and what the sign is, what the wonder is. Yes, we all are astonished sometimes, but we always want to make sure that we don't forget the message mm -hmm. of what is. You know, that is why we're not just studying the miracles, but we're studying our miracle working God, God right? Absolutely. Amen. So we give God glory for that. So then, am I, we know, we talk about this and how we're using um, evangelism, and I told you we're going to be answering these questions. So then that means that these miracles, they have to have some type of function, right? And so we understand that these miracles, while they bless us individually, right? Anytime a miracle happens in an individual's lives, they bless us and we give God glory for them. We give God praise for them. But then not only that, they bless us collectively as a body of Christ. All right. And so these miracles, they function um, for us collectively as God's body. All right. And then they function in a, in a number of ways. And so um, we want to look at how they function. All right. And one of them is uh, as an instrumental function, yeah. all right? And so let's go now, let's go back. We've been in the, old, in the New Testament, but we're going to go back to the annals of the Old Testament. And I do hope that you all have your Bibles because we're walking this Bible today. We're going to go back yes. to the book of Exodus, right? Meaning exit, even though it's at the beginning of the Bible. And we're going to be in the 16th chapter. And Brother Ahmad is going to read our passage for us. We're going to be beginning at the 11th verse. verse. It says, the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, then flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. Amen. Amen. So here we are having the children of Israel, right, uh, in the wilderness, hungry, mm -hmm. needing some food, needing food, right? And so the Lord being gracious, even though the children of Israel, we know the plight of the mm -hmm. children of Israel, right? Yes. Um, just 
trouble after trouble after mm -hmm. trouble, but the Lord is gracious to them, right? Providing what they need, telling them, okay, listen, I know you're hungry, mm -hmm. right? Because they've been grumbling. Um, so I'm going to send you some meat in the evening, bread in the morning, yes. right? What more, what more could you ask for so that they would be nourished? So here the Lord is providing this miracle to them as an instrument, mm -hmm. right? Providing this miracle to them collectively, not just to one person, but to Together. all of them. And so he performed supernaturally so that they would know his power, even though they should have already known his power. Mm -hmm. But they didn't, right, because they still had doubts. Yes. And so here he is performing for them supernaturally, right, um, and knowing not only his power but who he was in their lives. And he says it very plainly, I'm going to do this so that you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And so a lot of times we are in our place of need, mm -hmm. right, and God shows up in our lives so that we can know not only is he God, but he is our Yes. God. Yes. And so just like the children of Israel, the Lord provides us nourishment. He supplies us with what we need because we know that his supply is endless. Even if we look at what's happening right now, you know, with inflation, there may be some people who have lack. But this tells us, uh, you read it yourself, he says there were people who gathered and they may have gathered a little, but they still had no lack. There were people who gathered a lot, right? But they had everything that they need. So whatever the Lord supplied, they had enough. And a lot of times God will perform in a way that he will uh, reveal his nature to us. And so even in performing like this, this miracle served to bless the children of Israel, but not only that, it served to bless the children of Israel to reveal his nature as a provider. And so God has so many different character, uh, characteristics of him. And so sometimes he performs in our lives to show us exactly who he is. And there are times when, yes, we may pray and ask God to do something, but then there are other times when God performs even when we don't pray and ask him to do something. Or we may pray and ask him for something specifically, and God goes a step above and performs even more than what we need. And so, you know, we thank God that even as the scripture showed us, when he provides these instruments, these miraculous instruments, then we can really begin to understand the nature of who God is. So that's why we don't want to miss the message of the miracle, right? We thank God for the miracle. They had what they needed, right? But the true message is that God will provide. Yes. And so when God performs a miracle in your life, you really need to be able to take the message away because other than that, you'll get stuck on the circumstance, mm -hmm. right? And so then you won't be able to leave it because there's always going to be something that comes along that's even greater. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to go into that next trial knowing what the message is from the previous miracle. And then so sometimes there's, you know, the instrumental function. But then there's sometimes there's going to be the communicative function. And so God wants to be able to communicate a message. And so let's go even deeper into the Old Testament, to the book of Daniel. And let's see what the Lord has to say to us there. Daniel chapter 5. And we're going to begin our reading at the very fifth verse. Yes. All right, so starting at the fifth verse of Daniel chapter 5. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall, near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his legs became weak, and his knees were knocking. The king summoned the enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. Then he said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means, will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around his neck, and he will be made the, the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified and his face grew more, pa more pale. His nobles were baffled. So here we are in uh, the book of Daniel chapter 5, and we know that uh, Daniel had been known for being able to mm -hmm. interpret a lot, right? So when King Nebuchadnezzar was in rule, he had uh, interpreted the dreams. So when this happens to uh, Belshazzar, then his um, there's somebody in the court, in the queen's court, who remembers Daniel and says, okay, this has happened to you, the writing on the wall, there's this hand, first of all, that just appears, it would probably scare anybody, yes. right? <laughs> it yes. would scare anybody. And so Belshazzar is definitely astonished, right? He's, he's scared. Um, 
And so this handwriting appears. And so she remembers, oh, there is someone mm -hmm. who can probably interpret this for you. His name is Daniel. By this time, Daniel is old. He's almost like 90 years old. Um, but his mind is still intact. So he can, he can remember this. Um, and so, you know, Belshazzar, first of all, he calls all these astrologers. You read it. Um, and nobody can do it. And so he brings in Daniel. And Daniel, this time, he doesn't waste any time um, revealing what this message is saying. And basically, he tells Belshazzar, you haven't really humbled yourself yourself before the Lord and so basically the Lord is going to kill you basically um, and that's what the message really says and so you know the Lord uses this miracle because it is a miracle for a hand to just appear out of nowhere yes. and it starts writing on Absolutely. the wall right if you were in your homes right now and a hand disappeared on the wall you probably wouldn't think it was a miracle you probably would think it was something else <laughs> and go running out, and of, and go house. Running out <laughs> of the house we would all think that but it is a miracle it's right something that just would never even happen something that is really beyond belief that is what a miracle is is beyond belief but the Lord needed to send a message and what he understood is that Belshazzar wouldn't receive the message any other way because sometimes when we get to a certain level right when we get too lofty we get too elevated we get too above ourselves we might not receive the message and so God really needs to get our attention um, you know he needs to get our attention not just individually but sometimes collectively as a people right there's so much debate around COVID-19 mm -hmm. is it from the Lord you know did the Lord send COVID-19 there's so much debate none of us are the Lord so we really can't answer the question whether it's from the Lord or not really is probably of no consequence because here's what the Lord can use whatever he wants to use. So even if he didn't send the virus, which I don't think he did, that's just my personal opinion, but I think he can use the virus yes. to be able to get us a message, right? To, in order for us to be able to get our priorities in order, in order for us to understand what's more important in life, in order for us to tell us what we may have gotten away from that, you know, uh, those things that are long lasting. So God can still communicate through any means that he wants to um, and so even we see in this passage how the Lord communicated this message and Daniel then uh, him using Daniel in order to be able to interpret this message so God shows his ultimate power even above the above these earthly rulers so God showing his power reigns no matter what and sometimes we understand that even in our world today there's a lot of people who have a lot of power but their power still pales in comparison to the Lord's power. And we want to make sure that we always keep that in our minds. So God can use the uh, function of miracles in an instrumental way. He can use it in a communicative way, but he can also use it in a punitive way. The word punitive meaning punishment and we don't like to hear that mm. when we're talking about our Lord God no. because we always want to think about God as the gracious God the loving God and that he is he's always gracious he's always loving but the hand of God is still strong right it strikes where it may the Lord is the, the Bible says that the you know it rains on the just and the unjust um, but the Lord also he, he he's corrective Right. And so that might be a nicer word for you. Maybe it has a little bit more lotion on it. Right. It sounds better to you. Um, but let's look at first Samuel chapter five. And so turn those pages right back to where let's you go. were. We're going to go to first Samuel chapter five and we're going to begin our reading at the very sixth verse. First Samuel chapter five, verse six. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation on them and inflicted them with tumors. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, the ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is heavy on us and on Dagon, our God. So they called together all the rulers of the, Phil of the Philistines and asked them, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, have the ark of the God of Israel moved to Goth? So they moved the ark of the God of Israel. But after they moved it, the Lord's hand was against that city throwing it into a great panic. He afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumors. So they sent the, so they sent the Ark of God to Ekron. As the Ark of God was entering Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, they have brought the Ark of the God of Israel around us to kill us and all our people. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and said, send the Ark of the God of Israel away. Let it go back to its own place or it will kill us and our people. For death had filled the city with panic, God's hand was very heavy on it. 
Those who did not die were afflicted with tumors, and the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Amen. All right, so here we are. The Philistines in a previous chapter had gone against Israel, mm -hmm. children of Israel. Here we are, them again, right? And so even though no matter what has happened in previous chapters with the children of Israel, we know that Israel is God's chosen yes. people, right? And so they had the Ark of the Lord and the Philistines, when they had defeated them, they captured the Ark of God, right? And they thought that when they did this, then that God would be with them. No, you can't just no. take something and think that God is going to automatically go with you when it doesn't belong to you. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the Philistines messed up, right? And so when they did this and then they began to place it where it did not belong, God said, okay, you're messing with me basically. You're playing games with the ark. It doesn't belong with you. It belongs with my people. And so he sends down these plagues, right? He sends down these tumors. Mm -hmm. He breaks, first of all, their uh, many gods they have been rep uh, they have been worshiping. He sends down these um, plagues, and they came upon them just as he had done with the Egyptians. And so that's why when he, the... Uh, Ark went to Ekron, they got scared because they didn't want to be punished because he, they saw what had been done previously. previously. And so the Ark of God needed to be back with Israel. And in a later chapter, it gets back with Israel because the Philistines recognize we need to get it back to where it goes or either we're going to all die. And so in this case, the Lord sends these plagues, and somebody might say, why is a plague a miracle? How is that a miracle? Either way, if it's something that we can't do, but it's something that the Lord is doing, it's still the hands of God that's operating, right? And that is a miracle, right? It's something that is beyond our belief. And in this case, it was a corrective measure in order to get the ark of God where it needed to be. And sometimes God has to send corrective measures in order for his will to be exercised, in order to really kind of turn things back to where they need to be. And that's why I said there's so many, there's so much debate, so much controversy surrounding the pandemic, COVID-19, as whether or not God is using it as a corrective yes. measure we don't know. We are not God, right? There are some things that we will only understand by and by. Some things we will only understand when we get up to the great uh, heavens above with the Lord Jesus. All we know is that we can only work within the understanding that the Lord has given us. We can only operate in his will. But I will tell you that if you take things that aren't yours, if you do things that aren't, you're not supposed to be doing, if you try to act in a way that is not um, the way that you're supposed to be acting, God will always send a corrective measure in order order to um, correct his will because when you operate outside of what you're supposed to be doing, it's just never going to go the right way. So God uses it as an instrumental function. He uses it as a communicative function. He uses it as a punitive function. But then obviously the most um, widely known function that he uses, it, of course, is a theological function because God is God and everything he does always proves his heavenly and divine nature. So miracles always ultimately affirm God's deity and they do so in four different ways basically so we have the validation of God who God is we talked about this the other day his very I mean the other week his very existence right so the superior of a God over false gods all throughout the old uh, uh, old testament we see these false gods right these little g gods these other gods God is all the way superior over these little g gods right you don't even really have to mention them because God is God over yes. them um, it's interesting I'm probably pretty sure you studied this when we were in high school right we studied Greek uh, mythology mm -hmm. right and uh, right. all of those gods um, and it's interesting when you think about the characteristics of mm -hmm. the Greek God and they don't even come close no. because they only get one characteristic right. right that makes them a God mm -hmm. uh, but God is God in all his mm -hmm. ways right there are so many characteristics mm -hmm. that makes God yeah. God um, so he doesn't get to just be Zeus because he's strong right right, <laughs> right? Right? So um, God is God. Um, but not only the validation of God but, uh, over the false gods, but even in the New Testament when Jesus is being baptized, right, we hear his heavenly voice and we see his spirit being descended upon him, um, confirming his status as, confirming Jesus' status as God's son. So God is God, right, and Jesus then is the son 
of God, and then we see the Holy Spirit. So we see the triune being, right? And that validates who God is. But then we see the validation of God's message, right? So not before we get to the miracles in the New Testament with Jesus performing, we have the miracles of Moses, right, before Pharaoh. And that, um, Reverend Sills has co uh, covered that several weeks ago with the Old Testament, and that would be the 10 plagues basically that happened um, when he wouldn't let the children of Israel go, right? Uh, so he wouldn't let the people go. And then we see the signal of God's activity, right? The New Testament miracles performed by the Lord Jesus, all those things that we covered two weeks ago. And then prayerfully, all those things that are happening in you and I's lives today. And then, of course, we have the divine act of salvation. We, of course, discussed that the resurrection is the ultimate miracle. And so, therefore, salvation is a resulting miracle, right? The book of Acts, we talked about the formation of the church. How can the church be formed if people aren't getting saved, right? So the book of Acts, miracles are saving acts. They're not just signs of salvation. They are acts of salvation. That is a miracle. When somebody gives their life to Christ, that is a miracle. That is why we rejoice when somebody comes down and gives their life to Christ because they are being saved and we thank God for the miracle and we are reminded of Jesus giving his life and being raised up from the dead uh, of that ultimate miracle. So we talked about those three questions at the beginning of this lesson. How does God use miracles? Well, he uses them to show who he is in our lives, right? He's sovereign, he's everlasting, right? So from the very beginning, all the way unto the end, he's everlasting. Um, and then he reveals his nature to us. God is a provider. God is a healer. Yes. God is a great defender, mm -hmm. right? God is a deliverer. God is a comforter. God is our friend. A God is, he's a protector. He's our banner. Um, God is our father, right? Um, God is so many things to us that we could just go, the list could go on and God on. God is. God is. He is everything. He is Lord of all, and we thank him for that. But why does God use miracles? He uses them to advance the work of his kingdom and then to provide substance for us when we evangelize. So there is never a reason for you to say, well, I don't really know what I should talk about, right? If I say, why aren't you witnessing? I don't know what to talk about. You can talk about all of these miracles mm -hmm. that the Lord has performed in your life, but in the lives of the, uh, the Old Testament, the New Testament, everything in the Bible is free reign mm -hmm. for you to use when you're witnessing to others about why they should get to know Jesus. And that is why we have these miracles. But then what should we do when a miracle has been performed in our lives? We make sure that we look for the message of the miracle, which always points back to the miracle worker, yes. right? Our miracle working God. The miracle should keep us connected to the miracle worker, right? We want to stay connected to our miracle working God and connected to the work of his kingdom. So we thank God for the miracle, right? So let's look at Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 16 and how we really want to look at how miracles uh, can actually not only use uh, we can use them for tools of evangelism but how we can use them in our own lives and how they can really work in our own lives we're in chapter 4 starting with verse uh, 8 it says then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them rulers of the people and elders of Israel if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness appear in John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. So here we are, Peter and John, 
right? They're standing with this man who has been healed. This is a notable miracle, right? Notable meaning we notice the miracle that has been performed. And it's interesting how they talk about Peter and John. It says they are uneducated and untrained <laughs> men. But guess what they are? They're saved, mm -hmm. right? And that's the only qualification that you need in order to witness to someone. And so they recognize the fact that they have been saved and that this miracle has been performed. And it says, and they cannot deny it. And so that is why miracles are so important. When we are saved and when a miracle has been performed, no one can deny it. And it says when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, when you are saved and a miracle has been performed in your life, you should be bold for Christ so that no one can deny it. And so you may say to yourself, yes, I'm willing to die for Jesus, right? So many people, you know, they may say that they want to be a martyr, right? That they'll die for Jesus. But you know what the Lord needs? He needs people that are willing to live mm -hmm. for him, right? Are you willing to live for him? Christ needs followers who are willing to live for him today because those who are willing to live for him will share his gospel, yeah. will share his word, will share that he is a miracle working God. God. And that is what Christ needs. That is what we want you to walk away from this study knowing that we serve a miracle working God. So am I. Are miracles still occurring? Or, as theologians, some theologians suggest, was the canon truly closed with the writing of the scriptures? Because some theologians suggest that no other miracles have been performed since the Bible days. And then other theologians suggest otherwise. However, if we hold fast to the definition that a miracle is an occurrence that is inexplicable and only performed by God, we can say really that a miracle is performed every single day, every second of the day. Because every time a baby is born, that's a miracle, miracle right? Mm -hmm. Every time someone wakes up from surgery after having been to sleep. Miracle. A miracle. And I really heard one pastor put it this way. As long as the tomb is empty, anything is possible. Mm. So that means that as long as Jesus lives, anything, anything is possible. That means miracles are being performed every single day every single minute, every single second. The question is whether or not you believe it. It doesn't matter if we believe it, do you believe it? So we have some questions that we want you to consider as we get ready to kind of not just, we're not gonna fully wrap up the study tonight, but these are some questions we want you to consider. Have you ever observed a miracle? Have you ever observed a miracle? Absolutely. Okay. I, several. Okay. Several. All right. Has a ever has a, a miracle ever been manifested in your life personally? Yes. 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 Definitely. Yes. For me. Does the presence or absence of having witnessed a miracle enhance or lessen your faith? So if you felt like you had never seen a miracle, would that lessen your faith? It could. Okay. Honest answer. Not bad. Not bad. Do you feel the need? Now, you said you've witnessed a miracle. Now, let's say you're 18, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you live 17 more years, God willing. Yes. Do you feel the need to see any more miracles in your life? No. No, but you still believe in our miracle working praise God. God. All right, praise the Lord. Is God still God to you, even if you never personally see a miracle? And that's where we really want to land. Is God still God to you, even if you never personally see a miracle? And then these are some more personal questions that we really want you to get into your spirit tonight. What miracle do you need God to perform in your life, right? Because we can ask those other questions, right? Because those are just going to strengthen or increase and enhance our faith. But if we really believe that we serve a miracle working God, then we all want to come out of here with a testimony, yes. right? So what miracle do you need God to perform in your life? And do you believe that God can perform the miracle? 
because it does no good for you to write it down, take a picture, put it on Facebook, if you don't believe that God can perform the miracle. And if you believe that God can perform the miracle, then you need to start confessing it with your mouth, believing it in your heart, and rejoicing for your miracle today as if it is already done, right? And we're going to stand in faith. We're going to believe God in faith that it is already done. So what miracle do you need God to perform in your life? Do you believe God can perform uh, the miracle in your life? And if those answers are yes, then confess it, believe it, and rejoice God for it. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Well, we are excited that God is a miracle working God. And we are going to fully close out this series on next week about our miracle working God. But you should have enough ammunition about our miracle working God from everything that we've discussed. Basically this summer, we've been in this lesson this entire summer, but from the Old Testament miracles to the New Testament miracles to what happened as the early church was formed to really get it deep down, I mean deep down in your spirit to know that God is a miracle work. Not that he was, but he that is. he is a miracle working God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Mine, I'm going to turn it over to you for you to tell me what we're looking like on tonight. Well, we are always, as always, thankful for our miracle working God and the miracle that we have technology that allows Amen. us to be able to share the word of God, not only here in the metro Atlanta area, but also outside of the metro Atlanta area and nationwide. So we are so thankful for that that miracle in itself. Amen. And you're going to have to bear with me because we have several, okay. several check-ins from Amen. various locations. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Right here outside of the metro Atlanta area, we have viewers checking in from Kingsland, Kingsland Georgia, Tipton, Georgia, and McDonough, Georgia. So we are thankful for them. Amen. We're going to move to, we have viewers from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rayson, Wisconsin, Pasadena, California, Houston, Texas, Fort Riley, Kansas. We're going to keep on going mm -hmm. to our pastor's hometown yes. of Arkansas. Amen. We have viewers from Sherwood, Blithville, Little Rock, and Pine Bluff. Moving on to Louisiana, we have viewers from Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Pineville. Going up to our neighbor of Tennessee, we have viewers from Nashville, Chattanooga, Memphis. Again, we are thankful for the miracle Amen. and being able to just have these witnesses from all over. Moving on to Mississippi, we have viewers from Macomb, Meridian, Grenada, Jackson, Hazelhurst, Greenwood, and you're going to have to forgive me, I think it's Kosciusko, Mississippi. <laughs> Alabama, we have viewers from Alabama, Birmingham, Mobile, Smith Station, and Phoenix City, Alabama. Florida, that's nice sunshine state of Florida. We have viewers from Fort Pierce and Tampa, Florida. Amen. We also have viewers from North Carolina, from Dorham, Fayetteville, and Raleigh, North Carolina. South Carolina, we have viewers also from Greenwood and Florence. We have viewers from Virginia, Rocky Mount, Virginia, Rutherford Glen, Virginia, and also Maryland, Hillcrest Heights. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep okay. going. I think we have yeah. about two more. Boston, Massachusetts, and lastly, from Ohio, we have viewers from Cleveland and Columbus. And again, Sister April, we are so thankful, Amen. and we hope that they are all witnesses of our miracle working God. Amen. Amen. We certainly give God glory on tonight uh, for all of you all who are watching from across our great nation. And we certainly always give God glory for all of our Beulah members who are always tuned in. And we thank God that he certainly is gracious unto us and always thankful to the Lord Jesus for his Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Thank you, Brother Amai, for all of those check-ins. And yes, we do thank God for technology being with us. And we just want to really encourage you to really believe in the Lord's power on tonight yes. and to really trust God for your miracle. We're going to be praying with you, praying for you. Of course, we are praying for those across the nation as there are those who are dealing with various tragedies. We're always praying for our sick and our shut-in, mm -hmm. for those who are grieving, um, and just praying for those who are just dealing with many, many issues, uh, knowing that the Lord is able to cover us all. And so we just continue to 
bind together and trust the Lord day by day. And so we thank God and we look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday as we continue to walk in the word. We look forward to hopefully seeing you all on Sunday on this first Sunday in the month of August. And we look forward to one of you uh, as you continue to join us from across the nation whenever you make your way to Atlanta. Remember, we're saving a seat for you. Yes. So we look forward to that. And as we get ready to close on tonight, we look forward to talking to our Lord God. God, we are so grateful to you on this evening for another Walk in the Word Wednesday. And we're thankful to you, Lord God, for your sweet Holy Spirit as he continues to just dwell in the midst of us. Thank you, Lord God, as we are able to glean from your word, Lord God, how we can share your word, Lord God, to others that they too may know you, Lord God, may know you in the fellowship of your suffering, Lord God, but in the power of your resurrection. Thank you, Lord God, how you continue to dwell in the midst of us, Lord God. Uh, reminding us that you are always with us, that you have never, ever left us, and that yes. you will never leave us. Thank you, God, that your mercies are brand new every single morning because great is your faithfulness. And, God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of these miracles that we have been able to learn about throughout this study. And, God, we thank you for all of these miracles that we have been able to even witness in our own lives, God, these modern-day miracles. And thank you, Father God, that no matter what any theologian says, what any study might say, Father God, that we have power to believe within ourselves that you are still a miracle working God father God that each of us under the sound of my voice is a miracle father God every single moment when you touch us Lord God we are a miracle and so Lord God we thank you Lord Jesus right now father God that you're still a healer and that you're going to touch all of our members and friends who may be sick Lord God on this evening who may be dealing with terminal illnesses Lord God who may be battling long-term illness or even short-term illness those who are hospitalized father God we just ask that you would touch them with your healing hands father God we ask right now that you would be with our members who are grieving father God those who have experienced loss Lord Jesus that you would be that great comforter for them right now Lord God that you would heal broken hearts all across this land father God we ask Lord Jesus that you would be a provider for those Lord God who are suffering lack right now Lord God that you would be with them even in the midst of their lack, Lord God, knowing that you are a God who can supply all of our need according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that whatever it is we need, Father mm -hmm. God, that you are the great I am. And so, Lord God, whatever it is that we need, help us to put our trust in you, Lord yes. God. Help us to put our hand in your hand, Lord God, the hand that never, ever changes. And so, Lord God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for another opportunity to study your word, Lord God, to sit at your feet, to study in your presence. Lord God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for Beulah Missionary Baptist Church. We just ask that you would just continue to cover us, Lord God. Continue to be with our pastor, Lord God. Continue to cover him, Lord God, and fully restore him. We thank you for our first lady, Lord God. Continue to be with her, Lord Jesus, as a help meet, Father God. Continue to fully restore her. And Lord God, we just ask that you would be with all of our members, be with all of our friends. Father God, be with churches everywhere, faith leaders everywhere, Lord God. Be with all of our leaders in authority, Lord God. Be with our nation's leaders, our world leaders, Father God. Continue to hold the world in the palm of your hands. God, we're so grateful to you, Lord Jesus, for every single moment that you give us, Lord God, for the breath of life that you continue to breathe into our lungs, Lord God. We're grateful to you, Lord Jesus, and we just want to always give you the praise, always give you the glory, always give yes, you the honor. Lord. And until we meet again, Father God, we continue to lift your name on high. God, we thank you. We thank you. And God, we thank you. We ask it all in your son Jesus' name, knowing that it is indeed so. Amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. We look forward to seeing you on next week. God bless you.